Hi everyone, it's Nicole. Welcome back to my channel and a floss tube extra. This is felt stitching and snowflakes. So this video is going to show how I created these four different snowflakes. Two of the snowflakes are pretty similar, so I am going to only be stitching one of them on camera, but the green option is here just to show you how that uh, looks. And I'll explain what I did that was a little different there. There are other ways to stitch the snowflakes. And I'm going to show the heart that I used the snow flurries out on with, as well as how I created the bows and turned these into ornaments. So I am going to start by die cutting my felt. I know that for many of you who know how to use a manual die cutting machine, this is redundant, but I know that there's a lot of you that are not familiar with a die cutting machine. This is your first um, kind of foray into the world of die cutting. So Pashta Designs are stitching dies made to work with a manual die cutting machine, and they die cut the holes making it easy to stitch these together there's no guesswork there is stitched like a guide for you which makes it very easy now you can make these as detailed or as simple as you want you'll notice that because i'm making ornaments i need two of that large snowflake shape out of one of the snowflake shapes I die cut the snowflake pattern into that. Now I'm going to be layering a snowflake shape on top of that, but you don't have to. You can very simply uh, just stitch the snowflake on top, or you can die cut the stitched shape and then stitch with your embroidery floss right on there without adding anything extra. On the back part of my ornament, I did take these wonderful uh, dates. These were the previously released, I cannot think of the name right now, that's not good, but I will link them down be below. They are the dates that you can use to customize, and I believe it started, I think they're a couple years old, so it's like 2021 through 2025, I think, uh, but I will link those in the description. I am going to die cut all of my pieces. <clears throat> Excuse me, I mentioned this in my previous video. For me, I find it easiest to kind of die cut everything, get it all prepped and ready, and then do all of my stitching. You can use this snowflake with other dies from your stash. I'm going to show you another idea with this um, later on. It probably won't be uh, right away, but I have another project that I'm working on. So there are other ways to use these components. Mix and match is the name of the game. So I am going to die cut some white snowflakes now, and I'm going to use a different stitching guide. I'm going to go ahead and run this through my machine all at once. Now there's a couple of different ways to stitch this. The wonderful thing about the Pashta Design dies is that you can, um, or pardon me, not you can, it will come with a great little inspiration sheet showing you some different ways to stitch this as well as giving you some guidance. Um, so I find that really, really helpful. I like to snip off any of the excess felt hanging off the edge if it's got long stringy areas. I generally hold on to all of my little felt pieces and that is because you can die cut the teeniest, tiniest little things. I mean, look at the little stars there and whatnot from those scraps. So I have a scrap bin of felt. That is what I reach for anytime I'm die cutting something small like a, a flower, a leaf, uh, a little teeny tiny heart, star, whatever it might be but the bigger shapes I cut from the bigger felt. I have magnetic sheets here. I will link to these in the description. That is what I put my dies on for storage because obviously you don't wanna lose any of the little parts and pieces. And for me, I just find this really easy. Here is a good example of using uh, leftover felt to die cut these small pieces. So these are like little petals and I'm using leftover green felt to die cut these. Two ways of using. I'm placing mine back behind the die cut opening and then I'm going to stitch each in place. 
You can also put them on top for a completely different look. So there, again, lots of ways to use this. And here you can see me using up all of those little bits and pieces of felt. So I highly recommend hold on to your scrap felt. You are going to want to hold on to it um, because you can get lots of things out of it and it stretches your felt purchase. In the description below the video here on YouTube, I have listed out some of my favorite sources for felt. Pashta Design, of course, sells roll of 100% wool felt. I do want to mention I highly, highly recommend 100% wool felt. That is what works best for me. Uh, if you have good luck with other with uh, felt poly mixes, that is fine. I am telling you from my experience, this is what works for me. I also do not suggest the felt sold at big box stores like Michael's or Hobby Lobby. Uh, I find that it tears pretty easily when stitching. If you have not found that to be the case, that's totally okay. Uh, so in addition to Pashta Design, I also love the felt from um, the felt pod. I've linked them down below, Binzi Design. I like their felt. They sell felt, um, both the 100% wool felt and then a felt mix, and I do like their felt mix, uh, but I generally stick with the 100% wool felt. And then Tailored Expressions is another source of felt that I like. Um, I will have to check on one other source as I'm talking, so I'm not going to mention it in the video because I'm not sure that they still have felt. I think so, but I'm not positive. So once I have all my snowflakes, I am going to go ahead and die cut my heart. This is the Snow Flurries Heart Detail Die. It does work with the previously released basic heart die collection. So you will need that. Now you can see right here on the screen, there's two sizes of hearts. There are two different basic dies. I am only doing the large one in my video today. I will do some additional... Um, uh, felt stitching a little bit later on, as well as th the heart can be used in the future, uh, especially this little heart here. It's just a stitched line. So think Valentine's Day. Think ahead, you guys. I know we're not even to Halloween yet, Thanksgiving, Christmas, nothing. Uh, but just a little FYI, I like to extend the life of my dies as much as possible. Okay, when I have all my die cutting done, I'm gonna move my machine out of the way. And I am going to actually start with the Snow Flurries Heart Detail. I like to use three strands of embroidery floss. I'm using DMC embroidery floss here. Uh, I know the holes are kind of hard to see. There's a couple of schools of thought here. You can poke the holes out prior to stitching. Uh, I don't. <laughs> I think I mentioned this in my other video. I like to just kind of uh, fly by the seat of my pants and stitch it stitch it up. As I mentioned, if you purchase these dies from Posh to Design, you do get a stitching guide, uh, which does help quite a lot. You will see, I, it's hard to see here on camera, but you will see as you're stitching, you're going to see those little holes and then the little felt pieces will pop out. Does it make a mess? It sure does. Um, I always just kind of vacuum it up when I'm all done stitching. I am going every other, you could leave it like this really for a different look of a little stitched trail, but I like to stitch like all one direction and then I come back going um, in and out, you know, every other. That's how I stitch them closed as well. And I am going to do this all the way for all of the little trails on the front. When you are making these into an ornament, you are going to want to do all of your detail stitching before you attach this to, uh, or before, it, pardon me, before you sew the two sides of your ornament together. Any decorative stitching that you're going to do needs to be done before you stitch the two halves together. That is the last step, is stitching your ornament together. And in this case, we have a front and a back to stitch. And that is going to be the case for all four of the pieces. No, I lied, not this one. I didn't do the date on this one. I was going to and I didn't. I made this more of a bowl filler. I am not turning this into an ornament. It could be. 
If I wanted to later, that is something I could do later by just threading a needle with some twine, running it through the top of my heart, and then it, it will be a little hanger and I could add it to my tree. I generally, what I've been liking to do the last couple of years is I love that date die that Poshta has. And so I like to add that date to any ornaments that I am making as gifts, as I am making uh, for myself. It kind, of, it kind of is a nice record of what year I made what ornaments for the tree. And I'm starting to get a nice little collection. So that is really, really fun. Something else I want to encourage all of you when you're stitching with your felt stitching dies, and if you are just diving in to the world of felt stitching dies and Poshta design, um, mix and match. Mix and match what you have. Um, if you have previous kits, last year's kit had some cute snowflakes that were small scale, not as big as the ones that came in this. If you want to take those and incorporate them into this, do that. You don't have to keep your dies just within one collection or one year. And I know last year's kit is sold out and discontinued, um, but if you have it already, I encourage you to use it that way. Um, if you have dies from other places that you want to incorporate, even if they aren't stitching dies, you can do that. You can stitch them in place. I, I did a whole video last year. I will link to it uh, here up in the upper right corner of the screen, as well as down in the description below. And I am going to show you how I took lawn fawn dies and I made an ornament with felt. So you do not have to have stitching dies to stitch with felt. I do love die cutting my felt and then stitching it together. I do prefer when it has these, uh, has the quote unquote outline <laughs> basically done for you, but it's not necessary. Now I will tell you if it comes down to me having to cut out felt pieces myself, I won't do that. Um, that's just not my jam. It's what we like to call um, fussy cutting in the world of paper crafting when you have to cut out something with your scissors. And uh, I have a wonderful paper crafting viewer. I don't know if she watches these videos or not, but she calls it cussy cutting. <laughs> and I find that accurate for me. Now, if your jam is to die, or pardon me, fussy cut <laughs> felt, then by all means, there are some amazing designs out there. I know there's even patterns that you can purchase to do that with, but for me, I love a good dye. It eliminates uh, a lot of the stress for me, and also I love the precision of the die cuts. I'm a die cutting girl. Uh, another good question that I have had is if these dyes can cut paper, they absolutely can. I have never stitched paper with any of these dies, but if you have, let me know. I personally like to just use these with felt. For me, this is kind of a separate but similar um, craft. I hope that makes sense. I mean, the dies are, are similar, but for me, it's a, a separate kind of craft with the felt. Okay, I'm gonna finish stitching this up. I am playing a little floss chicken with my floss. If you don't know what floss chicken is, it is where you get really close to the end, but you only have a few stitches left and you don't want to pull out another strand or multiple strands in this case of embroidery floss. Uh, so you're playing chicken with it to see how close you can get <laughs> and hopefully finish. And um, so silly, you can see I'm, it's so short now. So, so, so short, but that's okay. So now I almost have it. I think we're gonna make it, what, one, two, three, maybe stitches left. I think I made it. It's funny voicing this over later and seeing, uh, did I make it or not? Yes. Oh yeah, that was, that was a close one though. Look how beautiful. Now, um, I wanna give a little hint here. I did not, I don't have any, so I didn't, and I didn't wanna to run to the store. But if you have some of the Krynik floss that has the sparkle in it, substitute one strand of that with, with the two strands of, of your regular DMC. Oh my gosh, it will add a little sparkle to your snowflake. How beautiful would that be? 
Okay, so once I have my little back stitched trails in place, I am going to go ahead and stitch my snowflake. I opted to do a contrasting color for my snowflake. So doing the green on green, and we're just going to backstitch our snowflake in place following the stitching lines. And then comes the fun decorative part. If you watched my previous video, that is where I like to add sequins, beads, all of the things. So if you have sequins in your stash, let's say if you're a paper crafter, or maybe you're not, maybe you just are a crafter crafter. If you have sequins, seed beads, all that good stuff. Now's the fun time where you can take those and dress this up if you've got buttons. Buttons are one of my favorite things. I didn't utilize a ton of them in this grouping of projects. Um, I did use some in my next video, and I guess I used one in the previous video, but I have so many buttons, you guys. I'm a button hoarder. I love buttons. Any of your little embellishments. Maybe you have little charms and tags. If you're a paper crafter, maybe you have some of the Tim Holtz ideology charms that you wanna to add to this. Just let your imagination run wild, everyone. Have fun with it. Make it your own. That is what I wanna impress upon you more than anything else, is make these your own. Um, it is super, super fun. Something I started doing for my kids. I wish I'd done it when they were young, but I didn't. Um, I, I didn't really do this kind of crafting when they were little. Um, but I started making them felt ornaments and truly they probably appreciate them more now um, than they would have uh, when they were young, but I still wish they had a collection of them. But each year, and that's where this date comes in handy, I make them an ornament that they can then keep. So uh, they have some really fun ones. Uh, Ellen Hudson had these darling bears that I did ornaments for the kids a few years ago. Last year, I feel like I feel like maybe I owe them one from last year. Last year was rough. Maybe I'm gonna have to uh, dive into last year's kit and make them some ornaments. Uh, I f yeah, I, as I'm saying that I make them an ornament every year, I'm feeling like I forgot. Uh, but then I made them some other, or what was the ornament I made the year before? I can't remember. Anyway, um, I have made them several. So they have a, a little collection going. I'll have to ask my daughter. She's probably the only one who Ethan's are all in a box somewhere. Brendan asked me to keep his because he has cats so he doesn't have a Christmas tree. Uh, and Peyton is the only one who has hers. So <laughs> I'll have to ask her uh, which felt ornaments she has. Okay, these are fun. Snowflake sequins. So I'm gonna put a snowflake sequin in the center and then put a regular sequin and then some seed beads. This little container here with sequins and beads, this was part of the Scenic Snow Globe kit. Um, so if you buy a kit from Posh, Des Posh to Design, you get a color story, which is felt, and then you get matching embellishments in this cute little container. And you also get the embroidery floss that matches. But truly, you can get sequins and seed beads from anywhere. A couple of my favorite sources are Pretty Pink Posh. I love their sequins and then she has tons of awesome seed beads. But I will tell you, you do need a beading needle for this and that's to go through your seed bead. So if um, I can say anything here, it's please grab a beading needle. You will be very, very glad you did. You can get a cheap package at Hobby Lobby or probably any uh, big box craft store or anywhere that sells uh, these kinds of crafts. I like to load them up and then use them. So I did the bigger snowflake in the center with a sequin and a seed bead. I'm going to do these smaller snowflakes kind of out in the middle of my heart. And then I'm even going to add some additional seed beads as I go. I am gonna speed this up a little bit so we can move on to the remaining snowflakes. I think it would also be fun to do different colors of beads if you wanted to, depending on your decor. Something to keep in mind, and I, this is for any project I create, and I try to mention this when I remember, I design my projects to what I personally will use. So my, my decorating is pretty classic and traditional uh, for the most part. 
And so I stick with a lot of red and white. I do throw in a little green or some rustic because I do have a, a second tree where I do more of a rustic design, uh, more neutrals and greens and, and like golds and, and ivories and things like that. So that's what you're gonna see. But if your personal style is a different color combination, just take these ideas and translate it into what works for you. Maybe you do blues and silvers or purples, or maybe you do like pinks and aquas and reds. All would be beautiful. Um, there's been lots of fantastic inspiration over on the Pashta blog, as well as other uh, designers who have participated in this release. So definitely um, play around with whatever colors work great for you. I do tend to do like little more bright rainbowish type colors for decorating my office and I think I'm going to try to uh, make a, a couple of ornaments for my, I have a, just a tiny little tabletop tree and um, add those to my craft room Christmas decorations this year. I think that would be really fun and a fun way to incorporate different colors. So in my previous video, I did show that I like to do a blanket stitch uh, sometimes and the heart really lends itself well to this. So I will be doing a blanket stitch here again. I am sorry when I am out of screen. I need to do a video just focusing on the blanket stitch and not so much just putting all the ornaments together maybe. You guys let me know. Uh, it would be a dedicated like short video where I would just show the stitching up close. I get going here where I'm focused more on the complete project and so some of those technical things um, I don't always show really well. You may lots of you probably already know how to do this. Uh, I like to go down from the top uh, pull almost tight, leave a little loop, come up through that, then go down through the front. If you remember to go down through the front, you will end up with a perfect little blanket stitch heart. I love it. It is so sweet and cute and will be the most amazing little bowl filler. Let's go ahead and put together our snowflake. So this is going to be the same steps for both the red and the green snowflake. Again, I am not going to stitch the green snowflake on camera today. And I think actually, here's something funny. I still had some green embroidery floss before we move to the red snowflake. I'm gonna kind of give you my thought process when I'm doing multiple projects. I had green embroidery floss left on this needle and I did have several needles loaded up, but I didn't have one with the white floss at the moment. And I thought there's not a lot of this floss left on the needle, but there is enough to stitch one of these little shapes. So I did stitch that shape. I will show you more of that in a little bit, but I wanted to mention that to you guys because to me that just makes more sense than unloading my needle, saving that floss and then reloading it later. It, it's just a, a silly little thing I do, but I thought I'd mention it. So again, you want to stitch anything that goes on the front or the si whichever side of your felt piece. Um, you want to do that all at one time. For me, because I did die cut the snowflake shape, we are going to stitch our snowflake. And it is a lot of little stitching. Believe it or not, this was way more stitching than I thought it was going to be especially because there's an outline around our snowflake. So I am going to backstitch the entire snowflake in place. Remember there are guidelines in the back because we did use the die to stitch this down. And once I have my snowflake, I am going to stitch the outline and I am going to backstitch the outline all the way around the red snowflake. Now this is the one difference between this snowflake and the green snowflake. On the green snowflake, I opted to do more of a running stitch type of look, so it's only every other. I'm not stitching that solid line around the snowflake. I am gonna speed this up a little bit um, to get the stitching all done for my snowflake. 
While I'm stitching, I think now is a good time to mention if there is anything in particular you would like to see more of or want to know more about as far as felt stitching goes, can you please drop me a note down in the des description below? I would be happy to uh, share anything that I can and I'll take your uh, suggestions into consideration for future videos. I love felt stitching. Uh, I'm a little bit addicted at the moment. I've been using it for several things. I'm pretty excited about some upcoming little projects I want to share with you guys. So uh, I definitely would like to hear from you and hear what you want to see or how you would like to see uh, felt incorporated and see if I can make that happen. Okay, so the magic of video, I have finished. Stitching. Now I am going to decorate the center of my snowflake with a snowflake sequin, a red sequin, and a seed bead. You could do another felt shape. There are additional felt shapes. I opted not to. And then in addition to the decorative element in the center, I am also going to be decorating each leg of the snowflake, but these with white sequins. I don't want these sequins to be that dark red of the center. So on the back, I'm just knotting it. Yes, my backs always look like a hot mess, but I always figure no one's gonna see it, so it's all good. If you're wondering about that great little floss drop that you may see you know, here and there in my video that I have put my DMC embroidery floss on, though that little die is available from Posh to Design. You can use it for this stitching or any stitching that you want a floss drop for. It is awesome. Um, so definitely uh, check that out. I'm gonna do a white sequin and seed bead on each leg of my snowflake. It adds a little extra sparkle and I'm all about the sparkle, right? All about the sparkle. And I'm just gonna travel myself around. When you are attaching your sequins, you come up from the back of your felt, go through the center of your sequin, go through your seed, seed bead, wrap your embroidery floss around the seed bead, go back down through the sequin and then secure on the back. That is how you attach those. So I finished doing that. I need to stitch the back of my snowflake before I put the two halves together and we finish it. I am just doing a quick little back stitch of the 2023. Now, what I like to do to kind of, you know, jazz it up a little bit is this is a great spot to add a fun little embellishment. Maybe it's a little teeny tiny button. Maybe it's a little sequin, whatever it might be. Uh, maybe it's another little felt shape. I'm a huge fan of like a little heart felt shape. But today we're going to take a snowflake sequin and put it in the center of the zero for 2023 just like we did uh, for the front of the snowflake. So once I've backstitched, I've got my little sequin, I've got my little clear seed bead or white, I can't remember which color, either one, or whatever color you want, and then I'm just gonna knot it in the back. We are going to stitch our ornament together. We're going to put them back to back Make sure it's lined up the way you want. And I am going to simply do a running stitch. I start in between the two layers, leaving a little tail, usually about three, four inches long. And then I stitch all the way around. And it's a running stitch. When you get to the end, leave about an inch to an inch and a half opening. Stuff your shape with polyester fiber fill as full as you want. I would suggest do not overstuff. You don't want the holes in your felt to tear. You don't want it to be so thick that it's hard to stitch. Finish closing it up. And when you get back to where you started, in this case, I can tell I don't have enough embroidery floss to go back around again to close it up completely. So I am going to go back through just half of the, you know, uh, two layers, so in between the two layers, and I am going to knot the two ends. That's a good example right there. I'm knotting those two ends and then I'm gonna snip it. I'm gonna get another length of embroidery floss, three pieces, and I'm gonna stitch around it again. So I've closed it up. I have loaded my needle with some thick twine. You're gonna need a needle with a bigger eye for this or 
if you're like me, you figure out a way to squeeze it through with maybe a few choice words for your <laughs> needle. <laughs> uh, and then I'm going to leave my ends uh, a little bit longer. I would suggest a little longer. I think I left these too short. Then believe it or not, the best tool of all, a bobby pin. These are wood beads from, I get mine on Amazon. I've picked three of them. You wanna take those two ends, slip them through your bobby pin, and your bobby pin is going to go through the center of these wood beads without having to try. You could use your needle, but I promise you this bobby pin is like magic. I keep mine in my little needle book because this is what I use. So I'm auditioning the wood beads. I bought all of these last year. I do have links to these down in my Amazon shop down in the description below if you're interested. I keep them in glass jars. I have lots of different color collections because I love them. Uh, you could make banners. You can use them to separate your banners with. You can adorn your ornaments like I'm doing here. I've done all kinds of things, finishing things for cross stitch, especially with these. So then you simply take your string and your bobby pin, thread it through your bead. Look at that pretty little trio. I love it so much. And then I am going to knot this right up tight next to those wood beads. Really, really tight. Now that knot probably is gonna slip down. So I am going to knot it again. You wanna make sure you catch your first knot. I don't think I actually did. So I very carefully untied this. Uh, you want it basically to double up your knot. If you have a thicker string, you probably don't have to do this, but I also didn't wanna to do too thick of a string trying to go through my felt and cause a huge hole in my felt. So this worked great. I'm just going to do that. You could always put a little glue here if you needed to. Um, oh yeah, I don't think I got this right. So I'm gonna fix this knot and I'm just going to uh, knot it here. And once I have double knotted it, you can see it's a lot more secure. I'm gonna move my beads out of the way. And then I knot, and I knot it again at the end and that's what makes it an ornament hanger. I just love the beads as a little extra, you know, zhuzhing it up, I guess. I think it's cute. It's a really, really fun way to easily decorate. The beads are fairly inexpensive. You get tons of them and they're super fun. So next we need a bow. If you watch my previous video, I shared that I love my friend uh, Chantal's of 141 Design. She has a bow maker tool set. This is the small bow set. I've got some red gingham, gingham ribbon. I will link to this ribbon and, oops, that's not right. And I will link to um, her site as well. So they're all different places, but I'll link to everything I used. So you wrap it around, you kind of have a loop there at your thumb. You're going to bring the end up through the center, through that knot and tighten it. Don't worry, I'll show it again. It's super fast. I've even left this in real time for you guys and it just goes that quick. Now I do recommend leave it on the bow tool while you finagle it and move it around and get it looking the way you want it to look. Then slide it off of the bow tool. You're, you end up with the most perfect bow every single time. If you struggle like I struggle with the perfect bows, you guys rest assured, your this is the answer to all of that problem right here. I like to notch the ends, I fold it in half, and then I just take my scissors and cut it at a little angle. Uh, if you only want it angled, I think I do that in tomorrow, or in tomorrow's, in my third video. Uh, I don't know when that video goes up, but uh, the, I will do that for my snow globe. And that has a, a little bit different. So you could do a double bow. These are single bows. I felt like this needed only needed a single bow, but I will be showing a double bow with my large embroidery hoop project. So then I like to tack mine in place. If you want to glue it in place, you totally can. I like to knot the end of my embroidery floss. This is just a single strand doubled up. I'm going to go in through the front and I'm just going to snip that close to my knot. And the reason is because we can hide the knot back behind the bow. And then following the stitching lines, I'm just using the same color of floss 
so it disguises the fact that I'm putting a little stitch in here. Come back up and then go through your bow and then we're going to just tack this down. So I'll probably go, you know, back through the back again, up through the front, and then I will just knot it and hide that knot back behind the bow. Sorry, I'm close to myself. It's a lot harder than you think to do this on camera and work so far out from my body. <laughs> Apparently I like to bring it right up close to my face when I'm crafting. My goal is just to hide it the best I can. And then we're just going to snip that. And you guys, our ornament, same steps for our green ornament. I'm going to use a black gingham ribbon instead for that one. Oh my goodness, I cannot even say how much I love this snowflake ornament. I want to make all the snowflake ornaments in all of the colors. So let's move on to our second style of snowflake. I'm going to show you the bow and yes this is speedy time but I thought I would just go ahead and make the rest of my bows so you could see them. I had this out my bow tool out so I thought why not just go ahead and make my bows. So this is going to be for this white ornament and then I'm going to use the black gingham ribbon for the green ornament but you can see perfect bows every time. I think those tails might be a little long but I always say you can start with longer tails and, and trim them up. That's easy. You can't make them longer. Let's go ahead and take our black ribbon down through the center, through that loop, pull tight. And just like that, you guys are going to be making bows for all of the, of the things, I promise. So definitely run over to uh, one, Chantal's 141 design and pick these up. She has lots of amazing board finishes and these tools are incredible. So now let's finish stitching all of our little petals to the back of this snowflake. I did match each color. So for this particular snowflake design, because I opted to do these on the back and have it more of like a window looking through, I want my floss to change color as well because that's going to be the decor decoration on the front. Um, again, there you can do them on top if you want to. In fact, when I flip this over, um, hopefully I flip it over in the screen, you can see how cute it would look if you just flipped it you know, obviously if there weren't knots on the back. See how cute that would be if it was on the front? So either way, but I'm gonna stitch all of these petals in place and then uh, we will be back and we are going to put this one together. My best advice for stitching is like I said, if you get all of your pieces prepped, this is a fantastic activity to do in an evening, like while you watch a movie with your family or watch TV with your family, or maybe you like to listen to audiobooks or whatever the case may be. For me, this is ex just as relaxing as like sitting and cross stitching, which is what I love to do in the evenings, just as kind of my downtime, as well as a great way to still be able to spend time with my family. My dogs can cuddle up on the couch with me because uh, it's like they wait all day for me to just snuggle with them. And then they just want to lay next to me and be next to me. Or in Frank's case, he just wants me to throw the ball over and over. So, you know, I throw the ball and stitch a few stitches and throw the ball and stitch. <laughs> That's what we do in the evening. But that is what I like about this. So I love to prep projects and then I can just sit and stitch them together. Um, and I just wanna encourage you guys, if, if it's something that you're interested in at all, that is what I love to do. When I have a few minutes, I will just die cut all the things and I put them together like either in little bins or even like little Ziploc bags. Or if you have the Simon Says Stamp zipper bags, you can put your projects in there and then you can take them on the road with you. If you're waiting in carpool line to pick up kids from school, I mean, I did that for years and years. I cannot believe I don't have kids I have to pick up anymore, you guys. Sometimes I'm so sad. Uh, <laughs> All of my kids could drive, uh, but I for years I did that, and I wish I had just kept a bag like this in my car for something to do. 
Um, I prefer this over scrolling on my phone, truly. I love to like put in a put on a YouTube video and stitch. That is my favorite, favorite thing. So um, maybe you wanna pick up a couple of those little zipper bags, put together some projects and keep them in the car for car stitching. Or if you got road trips planned and someone else is doing the driving, great little road project. It's not as hard as like trying to do like cross stitch or, or needle point or anything like that. Airplane, flights, all of that good stuff. I stitched some felt projects on my last flight that I took here in early September. I actually was stitching felt on the plane because it was something I could do without like a magnifier or a, or a specialty light. So uh, hopefully that gives you some ideas of things you can do. Okay, so I did die cut that center piece. You don't have to, that is an option. I love how customizable the Poshta Design dies are. And then I did do the little star in the center. I added a sequin and a seed bead. And I'm gonna add little clear beads to the points of all of the petals of the snowflake. I just felt like it needed a little extra bling. You could do as many or as few as you want, but I'm obviously gonna go all the way around adding my little seed beads. And then we are going to stitch our ornament shut just like we did before. That running stitch all the way around, making sure you start in between the two layers so that you can knot it and hide your knot in between the layers of your snowflake. That way it's never on the back of your snowflake and your back looks as pretty as your front. You can see I've already stitched the back of this snowflake. I did that off camera because it's just a repetition of what I did for the first one. Um, and I just love it. I think you guys are gonna love these snowflakes. I have another, I think I mentioned earlier, another little project in the works where I want to use these as a, a decorative, a decorative element for a vignette. So I hope I get that done here pretty soon and we'll get that shared, who knows. I may share that um, a little bit later in the season. These would also be super cute strung together, the snowflakes to make a banner. Oh, so pretty. Okay, we're gonna line these up. We're gonna stitch it all together. I just wanna figure out what I want as the top. I decided I wanted the dark green petal as the top. I am gonna start near the top. I kinda got smarter as I went along thinking, uh, if that knot, you don't really see it, but there might be a little bit of an uneven area just where that knot is. Honestly, it doesn't bother me, but if I can hide it where that bow is going to go, then that's what we're gonna do. So I'm gonna stitch all the way around and stitch all the way back. It's always about this point that I am so super excited because the end is near. We almost have a beautiful ornament. So I have stuffed it. I'm going to, I've threaded up my needle with that thicker white twine. We're gonna grab our secret weapon bobby pin again, because why would we not? I mean, it is the best tip ever. I cannot take credit for it either. I saw this um, on a video a couple years ago and I thought it was brilliant. Instead of trying to put those thick old needles on there, I think, yes, I think we want to do a red gingham to match the red gingham bow, but we're gonna sandwich it between these dark greens. Love it. We're going to push our bobby pin through our wood beads. We're going to double knot it so it's nice and secure and we don't have to worry about the beads trying to fall off. I like to do it as tight as possible. You could always just do one bead too if you wanted to. I'm kind of a more is more kind of girl. <laughs> Man, I'm having trouble getting that. I want the knots to be one right on top of the other. There we go. We're gonna knot the end, trim it up, 
and then tack our, well, that wasn't very good, and then tack our bow in place. Other options, and in the sheet you get with this snowflake set, this is called the lower layered snowflakes die. It also shows you that if you have the monogram die cut set, their smaller alphabet dies, you could use the hexagon shape in the center of your snowflake and you could monogram it if you want, which I think these would make the most amazing gift tags. Uh, and then ornament later on. I probably am going to do a few of these as uh, gift tags this year as an additional little ornament. I think that would be amazing. Um, and truly the sky is the limit. Play with the things that you have, have fun with it, mix and match. Once I have this tacked on, my snowflakes are all finished. I do have all the links to anything that I showed here. If I've missed anything, please leave me a comment and let me know. I'm happy to answer any questions you may have. And if there's anything in particular that you want me to show maybe a real-time video of, or maybe even a live video showing the die cutting process if you're not familiar with it or anything like that, drop me a comment and let me know. I would be happy to entertain those suggestions. You can see how I'm just hiding that little knot right back behind our bow. So cute. Oh my gosh, you guys, I love it so, so, so much. Thank you guys so much for joining me today for these snowflake ornaments and dough bowl filler featuring the new snowy collection from Pashta Design. The supplies I used are listed and linked below the video here on YouTube. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to my channel, click that like button, and don't forget to hit the notification bell to always be notified when I have a new floss tube stitching or quilting video. Thank you guys so much for joining me today, and we'll see you next time.